We often talk about how companies are tools for entrepreneurs. And one of the things that they are tool for is creating value and then harvesting that value. And today we will talk about how to harvest that value by selling your company and specifically how to sell your startup company to a corporation. So today we discuss the exit process with Ainoma ja Haarla. And currently she is a board professional, also chair in many companies, has had a long career in, as an investor. An angel investor has received prizes of the best exit of the year, best business angel in Finland. And also she has been working as a venture capitalist and in private equity. She has also started her own company and worked for several years as an entrepreneur. And before that, she had a long and successful corporate career in different industries. And this is not all yet. So she's also active in non-profit boards, uh, such as currently uh, the Friends of uh, Ateneum, and earlier in the foundation that uh, gives out the Millennium Prize. So welcome, Aino Maja. It's my pleasure to be here. Nice to have you here. Why is entrepreneurship important to you? It started to uh, interest me after working uh, about 30 years in big industry. Um, I was rather uh, frustrated in, uh, in slow decision making and avoiding risks. And um, um, entrepreneurship uh, opens up new opportunities to create something completely new. Uh, entrepreneurship is also very dynamic by nature, which uh, 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 appeals me a lot. Um, above all, it gives a freedom to operate, uh, which is, I think, a critical success factor for a successful entrepreneur. And uh, I like also entrepreneurial spirit very much, uh, which, uh, which is drive, motivation, uh, believing in your own skills and persistence. And uh, if we look at the entrepreneurs, uh, uh, they, they don't easily give up. Uh, they they uh, create new solutions. Uh, experiment them and go forward and start that round again. That's, uh, that I like very much. In this way, we can reach the good results, I think. Um, as an entrepreneur, you can um, impact on the state of the world uh, by your own decisions in a way you want and in a way you can. Uh, so Aina Maya, you have a long experience in, in buying companies, so from the from the buyer's side. Uh, why would somebody buy a startup? Uh, I can see several reasons. Uh, for example, to make uh, a company's strategy to work better, um, there might be a lack of uh, critical personnel. Uh, by buying a startup, you can you can get them uh, and as, uh, actually what you what you want. You can be specific. Um, when buying a startup, you can also uh, expand your product and service portfolio to complement your existing one, and uh, you can get uh, new market access as well. Uh, even um, to the places where you have not been able before to go. Uh, and uh, one important issue is uh, revolutionary technology. Many uh, big companies or established companies buy uh, startups because of their patent portfolio and such. And um, uh, also, I think one uh, important reason is this kind of soft issue. 
uh, um, many established old companies are struggling with their old-fashioned management and leadership cultures and procedures. And by uh, buying a, a startup, they can learn new ways to Uh, to manage people and uh, also about leadership practices, what the new uh, workforce is looking for. It can be a competitive advantage in the future for a big company. So, Aina Mayer, when you are in the buyer's shoes, you are looking for the companies you are interested in. Uh, what are you looking for? What is important to you or to the buyer? Um, I think it's uh, for a buyer. It's um, very important to know why uh, this company is buying something, and uh, what it is buying. These two main questions, and uh, uh, they must also uh, be aware whether company, a startup company, they are interested in whether uh, that is um, willing to cooperate with this buyer. It's not always the case. And you must, uh, as a buyer, uh, do your homework quite well. There can be some uh, uh, culture, company culture dependent issues, values related issues, for example. So you are saying that both the buyer and seller are humans. So if you want to buy a team and the team wants to exit the business themselves, that is a bad match and you should find a way to make the deal work for everyone. Exactly, exactly. Uh, I, th I think there are both these uh, rational and, and human aspects you have to pay attention to. Uh, so do you also look at legal aspects in the, in the company or what, what would you look at in, if, when you are in the, as a buyer there? Absolutely. They, they, they are very important. All agreements what a startup uh, has with their suppliers, customers, uh, are important as well as the agreements with, uh, with uh, people working uh, for a startup and all cooperational uh, uh, agreements are important. For example, if a startup is uh, developed developing new products or services with a development partner. What are these agreements like? And um, uh, also, and especially would like to say for startups, written agreements are very important uh, in the selling phase of the company because uh, um, these uh, spoken agreements, they are not existing. Yeah. So you need to make it quite easy to the buyer that the, the buyer gets a good picture of the of the main agreements, customer agreements, uh, supplier agreements, financing, uh, main employment agreements with key personnel, IPR and so on. And you need to have a documentation so that the buyer is able to to see what he what he or she is buying, isn't it so? Absolutely. And these are uh, one of the key issues in uh, due diligence process. And uh, it's, uh, I think the both partners, both a startup, uh, should make or ask uh, an expert to make due diligence as well as the buyer. A buyer, of course, uh, in more in detail. But um, uh, when the both partners make a DD, so Uh, they they reach a kind of common language to continue the discussions to the final end. So due diligence, just to, to <laughs> explain it to the students, that's that the buyer uh, like looks at all the documentation and there are different due diligences. It's a legal due diligence, financial yes. due diligence. Uh, uh, so 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 that's what the buyer does usually when 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 the company is, is bought before Ex buying the company. Ex exactly, and, uh, and uh, it plays a key role as to the uh, selling price of the company yes. Yes. and the value. And the value. So, so what else? It's due diligence. If you look at the legal due diligence, it's due diligence on the commercial documents, commercial agreements. It's a due diligence on tax 
uh, isn't it so? Yes, and and patents, patent patents agreements, are... and uh, uh, well, in in practice, it seems to vary uh, somewhat. But all these uh, key elements you mentioned are are covered. Uh, just just to get it uh, right. So who is the one? Who is the 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 one who who does the, the due diligence? What kind of different due diligence uh, do we have? Um, there are uh, companies, this kind of expert companies, uh, uh, who make that. It's um, uh, given to be done by external experts in normal cases, and uh, and uh, there, in many cases, there are several, as you mentioned, several due diligence. Uh, uh, processes uh, covering different areas, and uh, I would like to claim that uh, that uh, uh, it's uh, it's it's better to hire a very uh, uh, professional um, company to make due diligence. You have to be careful because it uh, uh, impacts on the on the value of the company. And uh, we avoid uh, negative surprises later in the process. If that, when the due diligence is covering and made in detail. When you face an exit process, uh, it's very important to have all papers in order. I mean, all minutes of the board meetings available and undersigned, and uh, all documentation. Uh, well done and up to date. Uh, it's important to make uh, um, all inf needed information easily available for a buyer, and uh, and also uh, the the startup uh, which is under the radar, the management and people should be available for additional questions whenever they pop up. So I understood that the, the value of the company is not always the same for different buyers. So why is it so different to different buyers, the value? Uh, I think uh, we have uh, to look first at um, why uh, the company is buying uh, a startup. Um, so for example, uh, if uh, uh, a company buys a startup to to take out of additional extra capacity from the market value is often pretty low but if you buy a startup to to get uh, critical resources human resources special talents value is pretty high and um, it depends on a strategic importance uh, of, the, of this uh, startup, what you are buying. Uh, so the more stat, uh, strategic importance, the higher price. These are averages, but so it seems to go. And um, as, as we uh, spoke already, the, the value uh, uh, is impacted uh, on the depth and quality of DD as well. So you should uh, make that in a professional way. And uh... can I add something also? So the value is probably also uh, there is also an impact from uh, if you think from from the kind of documentation, how well it is prepared, how how uh, many risks there can be from having future litigation, for instance. So it's important to have everything documented to to. And, and to show that, that you are a good target. Exactly, exactly. And um, um, all in all, um, uh, to uh, evaluate the real value of a startup is pretty difficult. Because uh, the value does not develop in a linear manner. And um, uh, uh, in many cases, uh, startups, uh, when they are 
the, uh, they are both. They are still in, de in development phase. They, um, they don't have yet a prominent turnover, but they more need additional money. And it's all in all quite uh, tricky. And only afterwards you, you can, uh, in a way, you can count was the value right or not. There might be many surprises on the way, so it, it is the best guess. So when you are founder or investor in a startup company, why should you exit the company or why should you consider exiting the company? Um, I can see three main reasons. One being that uh, that uh, the uh, shoulders of the camp of the startup are not strong enough to grow in the future. I mean that, for example, in the case when the when the um, market for a new product has skyrocketed and demand has um, uh, in the market has um, increased um, very fast. So you have to invest and you need money. You you are uh, going towards a much bigger company science and you need also special resources like legal, HR and so forth. So you need more, uh, more, more money and more expertise. That can be one. Uh, and um, then um, uh, also investors want their money back. When they, when they have invested in the startup, in many cases um, they prepare to, to get money back multiplied in three to five years. In practice it's longer time often, but um, in these frames. And, uh, and so investors give the pressure to, to do this. And uh, the third one, um, uh, I have found that entrepreneurs like, uh, if not love, uh, the art of a start. So they, they want to probably to do something else in the future, or they want to, to uh, participate in startup only at the beginning and take after a while a new beginning. And uh, um, that might be the, the third reason.